Hey everybody, it's Miss Cochran. Today I just want to give you a quick overview of what a thesis is and how a paragraph should be set up. So when you're reading something, you want guidance on how you should proceed through the text, what's the purpose of the text, what is it about, and that's why you have clues like a title, a thesis, a topic sentence. And the thesis is typically the one that students struggle with the most because, you know, in K-12 we teach very formulaic ways to make a thesis, but a thesis can be a lot more advanced than that. So a thesis is basically the central point of your entire te text. It's the claim you are making. So without it, there's no point. And you always want to give it to your readers up front so they know what's going on, what to expect, and why we're reading. So the thesis tells readers the main point that we supported, developed, and extended in the body of the paper. And we get that from Norton. And I really like that quote because it reminds you as the author to support, develop, and extend. So once you make your thesis, you have to really focus in on that and really develop it to prove it to your readers. It helps establish your topic. It tells people what to expect from the essay. And for you as a writer, if you keep it in your mind, it helps you organize and keep everything unified together. You may know what you want your thesis to be when you first start writing, but don't be alarmed if it changes as you do your research and as you write. That can be pretty common. And maybe it's as simple as you just add some qualifiers, but don't be surprised if you do change it. So to get to your thesis, if you really don't know where to start, Start a topic, or take the topic or the assignment and state it as a question. Then answer the question with your position. That may be a little broad, so you might have to narrow it in. So that means like making it more specific, um, qualifying it. So if something is not unconditionally always true, you add little qualifiers. Your thesis might have three parts to it. The main idea, the essay's purpose, and it's clearly worded. If we don't understand your thesis or it's very confusing, that's not a good sign for how your essay is going to be. Do not announce your thesis, especially now that you're in college. You never want to say, my thesis is blank, or in this essay, I will discuss blank. That's not really done at this level of academic writing, and maybe in some workforces that can be more normal, but right now in English 111, we're just doing standard academic writing. Um, so I suggest putting your thesis at the end of your introduction. That's because writing is almost like an hourglass. You start really wide at the beginning of your introduction. You bring it into your thesis, which helps keep it narrow and focused, and then your conclusion will re-widen it. It also helps just transition into your next point. So if I was writing an essay about the homeless and the purpose of my essay was to express feelings, a sample thesis could be the city's homeless families live in heartbreaking surroundings. If I wanted to inform you on what homelessness is and what it's like, I could say something like the plight of the homeless has become so serious that it is a major priority for many city governments. But also note there's a little bit of persuasion in there. And if my only goal was to persuade you to fix homelessness, I could have a thesis that says the best way to address the problems of the homeless is to renovate abandoned city buildings to create suitable housing for the homeless families. And all those examples come from a text called Patterns for College Writing, which is pretty helpful, but not required. Um, some authors have an implied thesis, which means the thesis is strongly suggested by the information and argument. But in English 111, I don't want any implied thesis. We're not ready for that yet, maybe as we move forward, but right now I still want you to focus on making an explicit thesis without announcing it. And then once you know the purpose of your essay, now we support it with facts and evidence. So we get into our paragraphs. This support, the analysis of it, all that's going to be in your body. So paragraphs have their own mini thesis in it. It's called a topic sentence, and that's just saying, okay, in this larger context of our discussion, this paragraph is focused on this. And again, it's there to help your reader transition paragraph to paragraph and follow what's happening easily, and it should help you stay organized. You wouldn't want to jump from here to here and then back to here and there and then, whoa, chaos, right? We don't want that. Um, so it's important to have your transitions. You can show cause and effect, comparisons, um, changing your direction of what you're saying, introduce an example, have some similarities and sequences, make time connections, show a summary or conclusion. 
And so those just, again, help us move through your paper with you as a writer. So your body paragraphs will need three key things, unification, coherence, and being well-developed. So to be unified, keep your topic sentence at the beginning, especially as like, you know, beginning college writers. If you're a really strong writer, maybe you have a hook and then the topic sentence, but it can be easier just to hit, here's what this paragraph is about first. And then all sentences in that paragraph need to deal with a topic sentence. Don't have your sidebars, don't jump around, keep it focused, keep it unified. Coherence means that it's logically connected. You have smooth transitions. So maybe you repeat your keywords. You use pronouns to refer to key nouns, but make sure we know what you're talking about. And then use transitions. So coherence is similar to unity, but in it's more just making sure it all flows together and connects. And then making sure it's well-developed is the third part. That's using support to help prove your thesis or main idea. This can be examples, reasons, facts, statistics, details, expert opinions, personal experiences, and visuals. The last two, personal experiences and visuals, I don't necessarily recommend for beginning college writers, but you can have them, especially if you're writing like a narrative or the visuals might be really good if you're writing something for a science lab. Put it in the chart. Put it in a picture of what happened in the lab. Your support should be relevant, specific, adequate, and representative, meaning that it's not a typical or a minority experience. So like if you're using this as support, it needs to be representative of the majority in that problem, issue, claim, solution, whatever. And it also needs to be documented. Do not put in your support and then don't document it. That's a quick way to get a zero for plagiarism. Throw in your MLA your, or your APA citation and go on. You'll be good. So also make sure that you follow your structure of your paragraph and support your thesis. If your body paragraphs are unified, coherent, and well-developed, but they have nothing to do with your thesis, then why am I reading your essay? They don't connect. It's confusing. I don't understand. So keep it all together. Um... Don't worry about a required sentence length in a paragraph. You know, as a former high school teacher, I used to tell my students aim for this many student sentences when they were first learning how to write a paragraph. But at this level, that's no longer a thing. You shouldn't say, okay, well, a paragraph has to be seven sentences. Um, you've read a couple of things by now. You know paragraph length can vary. But as long as you're meeting the support, unity, and cohesion requirements, you should be fine. But having a paragraph of one sentence, be careful. You want to make sure it's really helping. And is that one sentence really helping or is it just something you really feel like you want to say, but it doesn't, you know, add to the discussion. Any new idea or thought you move to is a new paragraph. Sometimes you have one idea that's super long and you just need to break up the paragraph in a logical location to give your readers a bit of a break. But if you're moving to a new idea, always break the paragraph. Um, so that's kind of where you are with your thesis and your paragraphs. If you have questions, let me know. Um, and we're just going to go practice with some of those.